Hi guys, this is Mo Volans for Tuts Plus. And in this tutorial video, we're going to be taking a look at using Ozone. And more specifically, Ozone Advanced 5, which actually includes uh, something called Insight, which I'll show you briefly um, towards the end of the tutorial. But really, it's Ozone, the mastering suite, and Insight together. Insight is a, a sort of a meter bridged web type uh, metering um, application plugin. And you don't necessarily have to buy them both. You can buy Ozone by itself and you can buy Insight by itself. Ozone is going to be perfect if you are wanting to master your own stuff, um, but you're on a reasonably tight budget and you don't want to buy millions of different plugins. Um, you don't want to buy any hardware. Um, I master with both hardware and software, but I'd be quite happy using Ozone um, as my only mastering tool because I think it's really strong now. Now it's on its fifth edition. So let's get into it. And, and this is a track you're listening to in the background is what we're going to be mastering. It's a, a client's track of mine um, called the Varuna Project. And uh, this one is called A World Untamed. And I mastered this with hardware, but this is the pre-master. So this is what was bounced from the mix. Um, I touched up the mix and this was the result. So it's a 24-bit file, 44.1 kilohertz. Um, and you can see there's plenty of headroom. I think this is the loudest point here. And we've still got plenty of headroom. I think there's at least a decibel, but mostly two or three dB headroom. Okay, so I'm just going to stop the playback for a minute and we'll just look at the architecture of Ozone and sort of get our head around it. You've got your main meters here, input and output on the left and right. And this is peak and RMS. Um, and just to show you that this meter bridge section, I've got it on a separate little monitor. Here it is. I have this viewed like this. So I either use Insight or this meter bridge shown like this on this monitor. But here it is. And you can have sort of stereo uh, metering, uh, stereo monitoring, and you can show uh, the spectrogram and your levels. Um, it's all very nice. And I think that if you, you know, this is a generally enough <laughs> for most people. Let's just play it back and you can really see, you know, all the frequencies in 3D. Uh, you can see all your stereo action. Um, and you can see your spectrum analyzer levels. If you move the levels far enough, you can see input and output. And if you click any one of these, you see it in full screen and there's some options for each one. So it's really extensive. Uh, and this comes completely bundled with the non insight version. So I'm going to put this back across here so I can see it. Okay. Without the meter bridge in, uh, activated uh, and with the plugin in, like instantiated, you can see the metering uh, input and output here. And the output is basically uh, post processing. So anything you add is going to be reflected in this output. You really want to make sure the input is um, not clipping. That is essentially the level of your file. And then all our processors are over here to the left. This is viewing a processor, these large buttons. And as you can see at the minute, everything is grayed out. So I've got equalizer, reverb, which is probably not something all of you are going to use or have used in the past. Harmonic exciter, uh, which is really interesting. Um, dynamics, stereo imaging, which looks sort of similar to the harmonic exciter. Uh, post equalizer and maximizer. So you can EQ before the processors and after them. So there's often confusion whether you should EQ before or after compression. Here you can do both or just one. So you've got quite a lot of flexibility without having to move things around. Um, and maximizer obviously is a brick wall limiter, uh, which we'll get into at the end. Um, now I'm going to sort of run through some settings you could use for this track. I'm just going to sweeten it just to show you ozone in action. We've not got obviously, you know, an hour here for me to get to a complete tutorial of, of the entire um, plugin, but this will give you an idea of how to use it. So you want to switch each area on that you want to use, and we definitely want to use some EQ here. Uh, there's plenty of bands, and basically once you grab one, you can change the Q point just by moving these bars here, and then you can change the, uh, the gain up or down just by moving it around. And you can do this either by grabbing these handles or grabbing the data down here. And you can also bypass each band uh, by just clicking on it. And if you want to solo the EQ, you can solo it here. OK, if you want to change the EQ bands and get into more detail, there's a, there's a bit down here. There's also snapshots for comparing different settings. 
and you can match the EQ to other material. So if you want to play some stuff in, you can do that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that personally. Uh, you can have the EQ mode in analog or digital. I think there's even a few different uh, models in digital surgical mode. Uh, I think that's linear phase, etc. Uh, and then there's a matching mode as well. So let's just fold that away for the second and we'll get into adding some low end um, and we'll get into sweetening things a little bit. The beginning's pretty spacey, so let's get into the body of the track. You also get a full on analyzer here, so this is post EQ, so you can see exactly what you're doing. I'm going to boost the high mids a little. This track's, you know, it came out pretty nice in the mix. There's not a huge amount of work to be done. So I'm just, you know, adding some sweetening here, really. You can bypass any of the um, models here, and each model, uh, each section has got presets. So say you want to, you know, quickly try something, you can uh, load up any of these presets, and you can save your own as well, so just by hitting add there. So if you like this and you want to call it something sweetener, you can just hit add there, and you've got a preset for each section, so not just an overall preset. There are overall presets down here, by the way which are obviously entire suites of presets. Uh, again, you can hit add, you can compare different presets here. There's a complete manager. You can even change and create folders, which is really useful. Um, reverb, yeah, okay, I'm probably not gonna use that in this track. I think it's epic enough, but if you've got a really dry track or you just wanna create some stereo image out of something that hasn't got it, um, this can work really well. Um, you can also change the overall amount of each processor using these sort of master faders. Let's put some wet mix of reverb in. Uh, maybe a smaller plate. And without, you can hear that larger sound stage. I mean, obviously that's what reverb's gonna do, but it, like I say, in some really, really dry tracks, a short reverb, very small amount of it can actually open up the stereo image and make it sound more lively. So don't write it off, it's definitely something I've used in the past, uh, sort of with some techno tracks or with some really stripped down acoustic tracks I've definitely used uh, Mastering Reverb. Harmonic Exciter is a really nice uh, way of sort of just adding some extra bite to the top end or to the low end um, and you've basically got four bands. There's also plenty of modes down the left hand side here so you've got tape, retro, warm, uh, triode, tube, uh, you know, so plenty of sort of analog emulation going on. Um, I think it's a really nice model. I quite like the tape and I quite like the warm. Um, let's just add a little bit of this to the peak of the track again, just to show you it in action. Uh, you can solo each band, you can bypass each band. Um, so let's have a listen to each band in process. I think I had it on loop there, so. So there's our, uh, high end it's a really nice way of being able to audition exactly what you're doing you can grab these handles as well here and if you want to mix in the amount of each one so say this is what you want but it's a bit too intense you can turn the entire amount down and it'll turn the mix of every single band down for you. So you get keep that relative mix, so you change these mixes relatively, look, like this, and you change this, it moves them all in a relative fashion. So that's quite a nice touch there. This is also quite a nice way of adding psychoacoustic low end. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just loop. The loop might be a bit crazy, by the way, okay? It's not exactly timed, but at least it keeps the music going. Okay. So there's your harmonic exciter. It's a pretty straightforward sort of psychoacoustic processor. Um, what I would suggest with this is go easy on it, okay? Any sort of psychoacoustic processing can be great in a mix, but I would suggest when it comes to mastering that you use these things with caution. Um, even a small amount of it can definitely add sweetness. So, so far, a little bit of equalization, a little bit of harmonic exciter. Dynamics is a really nice multi-band EQ. Uh, sorry, multi-band compressor, um, and it works in a very similar fashion to the harmonic exciter and the stereo imager. We've got this four-band uh, solo and bypass setup, so we can solo each bit, find sort of where our high-end high-end instruments are. You can solo more than one band together, 
and there's our mids, low mids. Great, so you can isolate things like, like this and then you can start to add compression. Get the gains right. Okay, so then if you select a band, you can bring the threshold down until you start seeing a little bit of gain reduction. The red bands here, the gain reduction, and just here, that's where the amount of gain reduction is displayed. It's, I wish this was a little larger, it's quite very small. You see, I'm getting two or three dB, it's about right. I don't want to have too much here. Now, there's a limiter, a compressor, and a gate in each band. Um, so you can um, limit, gate, and compress all at the same time. But um, I'm just adding a little bit of compression, really. And then moving on to the next band, I'm doing the same sort of thing. The gating can be useful, you know, if you've got a lot of noise in a track or you've maybe got some noise from recording. And then you can mix each band wet and dry. You can select them here or here. And again, we can solo and bypass this entire section. I'm going to add a little bit of high end as well. High end compression. Let's move this loop a touch. Great. See, that's an example of too much. <laughs> We've made the track dull. Just want a little bit of control in each band. Right, stereo imaging. So this has got a nice vector scope uh, stereo meter here to show you what's going on. You can change the mode of it if you prefer polar L mode. Um, and there's also a straight up list stereo mode as well. Good stuff. So we can see what's going on. Get a nice picture of the stereo image. I'm going to take the bypass off here and we can start to add width to say, the high end and a little to the mid. Now the good thing is here, you know, you can start to add delay to each band, but also um, you can take the stereo image down in the lower frequencies. I just want to make sure that I'm doing this in exactly the right area. I always like about 270, 280 in electronic music. And in this instance, I'm going to make the low mids a little lower. Let's solo that high mid there. And then you can get away with a little bit more stereo enhancement in the upper end. But basically, we want to keep the low, the low frequencies uh, more mono, and we want to make sure there's not a huge amount of stereo information down there. Let's get rid of these solos. without and with. We're trying to keep things subtle here. Now you might find that when you've done all this, you might have lost a bit of low end through the compression. And dial some back in with the post equalizer. And if we want, we can we could add a high pass. Maybe take out everything from 20, 20 hertz or 21 hertz. And then we can use this second band as a low shelf. So what essentially we're doing there is feeding some low end back in that we may have lost in compression, but using the high pass filter to ensure that we've not got any real serious subsonics that are going to affect the final limiter, which we're going to apply now. If you want to, you can go higher than 21 hertz on that, um, that low band. Um, but, you know, I think 21 hertz is, is fine. Uh, some people go to 30 hertz. It's completely up to you. And then the maximizer, let's switch it on. It's essentially a brick wall limiter. Um, we'll go with the transparent mode. You see here you get a bit of zipping when you switch modes here. I don't know if you can hear that. I would imagine you can. Um, the way this works is we're going to set a margin. We're going to set an upper limit. And I've gone with 0 point, minus 0 0.1. And then we're going to take the threshold down. But let's go with a little... 0.2. Okay, so you, if you experiment with a few of these modes, you'll find that you can only use intersample detection with a few of them. Um, and you might find that you need to pull the margin down a fair amount uh, before you stop getting um, 
real clips, you know, because if you've got the true metering on, it's going to show you uh, real clips. And this is a, a whole different tutorial, to be honest with you, to ensure that, you know, you don't get any in intersample clipping uh, that might flow through into your export and, and definitely flow through into MP3 encoding or other um, lossy encoding. Uh, these clips are going to get worse as you encode and go down in bit depth. So be aware of that. But you can see here that I probably want to drag this margin down a little further just to avoid these serious, serious clips here. You can also dither uh, right here within Ozone. Uh, you may have dithering in your DAW, obviously in Logic. There's some dithering options here. But you can dither right here and uh, they've got the Mbit Plus, um, which is considered to be one of the industry standards now. Um, when you've finished, you can change the, um, the master amount of all these effects in the same way that you can within the EQ and within the dynamics. So it's really useful to be able to change that relative mix of all the effects at once. And again, you can turn that meter bridge on and off. Um, let me just bring it across. And it's just activated right here. So you can have that on and off anytime you want. So I think personally, this is a great suite just to work right within. It's That's just a quick sort of walkthrough um, of every different module. Um, I, I may do a, a more in-depth tutorial if any of you are interested, if any of you Ozone users out there want me to get right into each um, each module, module even further. But I think that you really can't go wrong with it. And it's, it's going to save you money uh, over buying individual plugins and buying hardware as well. So uh, there you go, Ozone 5 Advanced. Uh, for the people that want to master their own material. Next up, I'm going to get into a couple of quick tips on synthesis techniques uh, to change the subject up a little bit. Or As always, leave comments down below. Let me know what you want to see, and I'll try and add it to my to-do list. Cheers for now.